Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to have a look at a tank which has been there from the first days of the war, so Fall Weiss, or also known as the Invasion of Poland, until the last days of the war, so Battle of Berlin and so on. Now this tank is also one of the most produced tanks of the Second World War, maybe not by the Soviet Union standards or American standards, but by German standards as well. It was of course the Panzer IV, being only produced less than the Stuk 3 and the SDK at 251, both of which are not tanks. Now, I've personally done my fair share of research, so if you guys enjoy the video, please leave a like, sub and comment. This gives the YouTube algorithm more spread to other people, and this in turn allows me to make higher quality videos for you guys in the future. Now let's get going. The Panzer IV is probably one of the most well-known German tanks of the Second World War, of course next to the Tiger and the Panther. Now, the reason for this is mainly because it was produced so much. It was produced around 9000 times and it made up the bulk of the entire Panzer army. It wasn't exceptionally in anything apart from the fact that it was produced so many times. For Germany, 9000 is quite a lot. Like I said before, only two other vehicles which have been produced more were of course the Stuk and the SDK Z251. Now, uh, the Panzer IV had 10 different versions, the A, B, C, D, E, F1, F2, G, H and J, uh, with the J being the last one, and it had three different main armaments, with the first main armament being a shorter, more infantry support main armament. This, you could say, is comparable to the role the Stuk 3 had in the early stages of the Second World War and it had longer main armaments and this was to challenge other tanks especially after Operation Barbarossa had commenced the T-34, the KV-1 and so Just like everything what's great and what's good it wasn't just built in a single day. The idea for the Panzer IV arose back in 1934. The first designs were made in 1936 so that's two years later and later that same year, the first Panzer IV was actually made. But the issue is this. The issue was the fact that the Treaty of Versailles was still in effect, and the Treaty of Versailles dictated that Germany wasn't allowed to have any tanks. So the Germans had to do some trickery, and instead of just the Panzer IV call it a tank, they named it the accompanying Virgo or the Berg Light Panzer, if I recall correctly. Three companies were actually contacted to make a design for the Panzer IV with Krupp eventually walking away with the main contract. Now like I said earlier, the debut for the Panzer IV was in Operation Weiss, so that's the invasion of Poland, where they were used in quite small numbers. And after the invasion of Poland, Germany decided to upscale the production. According to the book Panzer Truppen Volume 1, when it was time to face the Allies, so the Benelux and France and the UK, Germany was fielding 2,500 tanks and of those 2,500 tanks, 280 of those were the Panzer IV. During Fall Gelb, the Panzer IVs were using the 75mm L24. This was mainly in the earlier stages of the war where the Panzer IV didn't have an amazing anti-tank gun. But it did have a good infantry support gun. Now the idea for the Panzer IV back then was to fire high explosive shells on either infantry or fortifications. Meanwhile the Panzer III in the same unit would take care of the armored Virgos. That sounds great in theory. But then they encountered the Matilda II and the Char B1 BIS. Now both of these Virgos were basically impervious at least frontally to the Panzer III's main armament. And so they were also basically invulnerable to the main armament of the Panzer IV. So most of the time what they had to do was to call in the anti-aircraft gun, so the ATA millimeter, and they would be more qualified for the job to take out the Matilda IIs or the Char B1 BIS tanks. Also fun to know is that these roles basically switched around. So after the wake-up call uh, during Operation Barbarossa, the Panzer IV tanks would get the stronger anti-tank guns and the Panzer III tanks would get the 75, the short 75mm to provide infantry support. Operation Barbarossa was a wake-up call for the Germans and this is because they encountered either tanks which are faster, stronger main armaments or they have better protection or sometimes even a combination of those. 
Now Germany was already designing some tanks which were a lot stronger than the T-34 and the KV-1, but they were still in design stages. So what Germany needed to do is they needed their tanks were already existing tanks, so the Panzer III, the Panzer IV, the Stuck III, uh, to have better main armaments to take down the T-34 or the KV-1 tanks. Now, the Panzer III wasn't very suited for getting a massive main armament on him, because it was already quite a small tank. So they decided to give the Panzer IV a bigger main armament instead, and it became the 75mm L43. So as you can understand, the weight of the Panzer IV only got heavier and heavier and heavier. So the better main armament, the more protection, the Schurzen. So when you compare it to the earlier versions of the Panzer IV, the Panzer IV Ausführung A only weighed 18.4 tons. Meanwhile, the Panzer IV Ausführung J, so that's the last version of the Panzer IV, only weighed 25 tons, which, when you compare it to other tanks of other countries, is still relatively light. But you can imagine that it puts a lot more strain on the components than it did before. Or someone in the comment section says, but yeah, they all got different components and they were made more reliable and they had like nine years to develop this vehicle to make it more reliable. Yes, that is true. They got a stronger engine. They got a new gearbox uh, over all the versions. There were a lot of reliability upgrades, but also there were a lot of corners cut eventually in production to make sure that production went faster because, well, the allies were closing up on them. One of these issues were the final drive issues, but these were not uncommon with tanks from Germany around that time, and it also had steering brake issues, which we've also heard before. Now keep in mind, these issues could have been exacerbated by either inexperience from the drivers, which most of the time makes or breaks the reliability of such a vehicle, and the fact that Germany started to kidnap people out of their countries to work in their factories and sometimes they try to sabotage the stuff they were working on. Like I previously said, the last version of the Panzer IV which was used was 25 tons heavy. This is pretty heavy but when you compare it to other tanks which Germany used it was quite light. Now the weight added, so the main armaments, the Schurzen, the heavier protection and so on didn't help of course, but to get this tank places you need a pretty good engine. And the engine the later versions used was the Maybach HL 120 TRM, which had 300 horsepower. This engine allowed the tank to have a top speed of 38 km an hour, but keep in mind they never really drove on top speed, they drove on cruising speed, and this would be between 20 and 30 km an hour. Now the normal family car would drive around 14 miles per gallon, the Panzer IV did around 2 miles per gallon. Which for a country which doesn't really have any fuel isn't great as you might imagine. We have already talked a bit about the main armaments, but right now we'll do it in a bit more detail. Now the Panzer IV Ausführung A, B, C, D, E and F1 versions all use the 75mm L24, these were of course used as anti-infantry and anti-fortifications. Now the first version which didn't use the L24 was the F2 version, the F2 version using the L43 main armament, better as an anti-tank gun, uh, so better at long range, better at uh, penetration, better muzzle velocity and so on. Now the G version which came after the F2 version also used the L43, but it also used the L-48, which is an even longer version of the main armament. The L-48 was eventually also used on the H version and on the J version, the J version being, of course, the last version. Now, the thing is, the British didn't fully expect the Germans to come with a longer main armament, so they actually dubbed the F-2 version Mark Special, which is quite interesting when you think about it. One last thing is that the J version, so the last version which was produced during the last 16 months of the war, was produced 3,500 times. And this is one of the most, uh, one of these Panzer IV tanks was produced, at least one of these versions, which is quite a lot and quite impressive when you consider the fact that the Germans were and losing a lot of ground and they were getting continuously bombed, so that's not amazing. 
The Panzer IV had a crew of five, so they had the commander, the gunner, the loader, the driver and the radio operator. Now the commander, the gunner and the loader would be all positioned in the turret and actually according to the opinion of the crew members it was actually quite roomy in the turret. Meanwhile the driver and the radio operator would be sitting at the front of the tank, so left would be the driver and on the right there would be the uh, radio operator which right in front of him he would have also a machine gun uh, which was the MG34. Furthermore the Panzer IV as you might have noticed in these pictures and footage I've been showing you guys throughout the video is slightly asymmetrical and the turret is also slightly offset and in addition to all of that the engine was moved 15 centimeters to the right. And this was in order to directly connect the turret ring and the main torque shaft allowing for a faster turret traverse being able to do 360 degrees in 22 seconds. In addition to all of this the Panzer IV has a elevation of 20 degrees and a depression of minus 10 degrees on earlier versions and later versions have a elevation of 20 degrees as well but a depression of 8 degrees so that got decreased. But keep in mind especially still for World War II tanks this is pretty pretty all right especially when you compare it to the tank uh, Germany also later used the Leopard II which has an elevation of 20 degrees and a depression of nine, minus 9 degrees. Another valuable thing which they introduced on the Panzer IV was of course Zimmerit and Zimmerit was quite useful. Now Zimmerit was a type of paste which they put on the tank and this was in order to avoid sticky bombs sticking to the hull of the tank. Of course most vehicles from the Panzerkampfwagen line had their own versions of their tanks basically. So the 3 had the Stuk 3, the 5 had the Jagdpanther, the 6 had the Sturmtiger and so on. Now the 4 was no stranger to this because the 4 had a lot of them and when I say a lot I mean a lot. So for example they had the Broombar, they had the Jagdpanther, they had the Nashorn, they had the Wirbelwind, the Oostwind and the Kugelblitz. Those are all anti-air guns. And they also had the Stuk 4. And even, even with all of this, they even tried to make a hybrid which was supposed to be called the Panzer 4S. Which used the turret of the Panther uh, F version. But this was just a suggestion and nothing eventually really came to paper. But it was still a very interesting piece of machinery when you think about it. The Panzer IV was used on every single theater Germany was fighting in. So of course in Africa, in the Soviet Union, in France, in Poland, in the Benelux, in basically everywhere where the Germans actually fought. Now keep in mind that even though it isn't the most feared tank uh, from the Germans, so of course that would go to probably the Tiger, and then the Panther and then the King Tiger, it still was more than a formidable force to be reckoned with. And that's what I want to uh, finish the video off with, that it was still a pretty good medium tank. Now ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, sub and comment. Uh, especially comments, I really appreciate those. If those are either feedback or just a nice comment, I love them both. I appreciate them both. Um, I would like to thank VW German Looker and Sander for being part of my channel. I would also want to say that I got the sources for my information in the description down below here. So if you're interested in that, uh, just have a look for that. You can read everything I've said in this video. In addition to that, the next video will be about the uh, P2640 from Italy, as promised to one of my viewers which requested an Italian tank. So that will come in the future as well. And other than that, have a very good day.